To try and understand the problems these speed skiers have, I thought I'd give it a go. 150 miles an hour. That's my target. Twenty-eight point eight miles an hour. It's obviously broken. You gonna play slapsies? <laughs> yeah, we can. <laughs> Go on then. Let's just see if I've got the same reaction times as you have. Nice. You know how to do this. I guess, yeah. You want to go first? After you. Ha! One nil. No, I am. Oh, it's your turn, okay. Yeah, you missed it. Isn't it like this? Oh, right. Softly! <laughs> Ooh. Ooh, that was only a fingernail, that one. <laughs> okay, let me just try it with you. Okay, watch you, my okay. eyes. This plane is the work of genius. It's so clever, I'm surprised the Americans haven't claimed they invented it. And before they get any funny ideas, I thought it might be a good idea to pay them a visit. We invented everything. Without the British, you wouldn't even be here. We gave you Fleetwood Mac and Oasis and the Who and Led Zeppelin and the Rolling Stones and Genesis and Pink Floyd. And what did we get back in return? What did you give us? I'll tell you what you gave us. Michael Bolton. Thank you very much. My, my, how you've enriched the world with the stupefyingly okay, dull. Okay, Quiet down. Very peaceful neighborhood. You've had your say. No more. And you've had your warning. We invented the police right. force! That's and it! And we it. invented... Oh, all right, thank you very much. Let's take a ride down. We invented the US Navy, oh, did right. you know that? Nice warm cell. Are they handcuffs? They're British. Oh, wonderful. Oh, police brutality, that was one of ours. And you're going to put me in a car. A German invention, that, you know, got nothing to do with you lot. Do you know how many American components there are in Concord? Not mm -hmm. interesting. Well, you should be, because I'll tell you how many there are. None! Not one! Nothing at all! Now I'm standing at the moment on a glacier and there's no way I'm going to ski down it in conditions like these. I mean, it's snowing. So what I'm going to do is something that's never been attempted before. I'm going to take the car. <laughs> this car four-wheel drive and anti-lock brakes and here I am doing everything in my power to kill myself. So why am I doing it? It's because I can, because it's exciting. Oh, you show up. You want to race, do you? Right. I'll show you what showing off is, mate. <laughs> my voice control. So if I want to know how much petrol I've got left, I just go, what, but is it display? Display fuel. Display fuel. That's amazing. Display stores. Display stores. And there are my bombs. That's it. That's incredible. Oh, and can it understand people from Birmingham? Uh, you can, you can uh, speak to it in any language you like. Even Birmingham? Even Birmingham. Really? Target Foxtrot. It doesn't, it's not doing anything. That's because you haven't trained it in your Birmingham accent. Oh, I see, you have to teach it Birmingham. You load your voice into this aeroplane every time you fly. Really? So mm -hmm. a pilot pushes his cassette in, yep. and then it learns to speak Birmingham? Yep. yep. Oh. How can you feel that you've gone around a corner faster? What does it feel like? 
feel the car on the edge. What does that feel like? You, you have the feeling for the optimum. It's a knowledge I, I have when, when the car is maximum. And Schumacher is there with a clear track ahead of him by nipping through on the inside. And you can feel that. You can feel oh, yeah. on the car. You're you half a one. mile an hour faster yeah. and you're going to crash. I say it's probably a thousand of a second. And Michael Schumacher wins the Spanish Grand Prix. Seven Jack Villeneuve in the blue car had to beat him to win the championship. So Michael, as the replay shows, tried to ram him off the track. Jacques Villeneuve and you bumped into him. Did you have guilt about that? No, not really guilt. I've been growing up with Senna and remember incidents with Prost and Senna. Go! Ayrton Senna was the greatest racing driver of the generation before Schumacher and he too would ram people off the track if he thought it necessary. Senna world champion this year. That's why I don't, don't have the feeling I'm guilty for anything, because it's part of, uh, it was part of the game. I knew it wasn't right, but this is an important moment, everything or nothing, and you go for it. So that's it. To be the fastest, to be the best, to be a winner, you do what needs to be done, and to hell with the consequences of someone English. Jeremy, we are in one of our colonies, OK? While we're in one of our colonies, um, we've got to expect things a little different. Jim here has spent his entire life savings bringing his ancient Allard to Utah. But it's ingenuity, not money, that'll get him past 200 miles an hour. What is this here? <laughs> well, um... We ran short of metal, Jeremy, and we really desperately needed to do some additions to the aerodynamics to get air into the engine. Yeah. And uh, at 2 o'clock this morning, we were rather restless, and we were just walking down the main street, and you know the big Super 8 signs? One happened to come out of the sky onto <laughs> us, and we felt it was an act of God, and it was intended for us to so use. you've stolen so, their sign. No, it fell accidentally. You stole their sign no. in the middle of the night, and was, you cut it up. The, you could hit, there was a sort of a flapping noise, <laughs> Jeremy. Show me where it is on the car, just show me where you're talking. We're, we're trying to gonna... get a Super 8 in the middle, but we can't. That's you have, but you have credited got... them, look, on the you're, side. We've given them a credit. You look down the side, the Super 8 Motel, who kindly gave us their sign. <laughs> See how I hit the car into the curb there and feel the tail coming out. Whoa. No big deal. Really no big deal at all. Just a little dab of the handbrake to get around this one, I think. Yes, there we go. See the majesty. No. Oh, no. Oh, no, no, no. Oh, no. Oh, dear. I've gone off, everybody. It's shaken up, just got a damaged ego, I think. Oh, God. Now, I should explain at this point that the noise you're hearing is not from the BBC sound effects library. It's for real. Paper boys, pay attention. This is the throttle, and under no circumstances should you ever turn it up to the floor because you will be doing 70 miles an hour. And at that speed, you will go deaf. Moderation, that's the key. I don't think this is entirely what Mr Prescott had in mind when he asked us all to go to work on a bicycle, but you know, needs must. Um... That's great! So do we go, we have to walk down there now, do we? Now we have to walk. This is just not made for me, golf. I could only like it if I staked all my career earnings 
on a round of golf. You know, I like there to be pressure. You, I've had an accident already. <laughs> it's more exciting already. I, do it again. <laughs> um, I just kind of about meeting up tomorrow. If you bring this car, is my bet noir. No, no, hang on, I have to work because there's five of us. I need to get back. It, so people who just uh, don't get no, to no, the point. Uh, I'll come back. With that. Anyway, look, give us a call on the mobile. I'll be on, I'll be on it for the next hour. Then I'll Get on with it! Now, so I'll give you the number. Oh, hurry up! I'll probably say I'm out, but if you know that's cause, uh, I'm in the meeting. So I don't I'll have time for this! I said it's okay, because they'll try and cover for me, and that they can come and get me. Ask for Debbie, or Louise, if she's not that young one, don't worry about it. Shut up! <laughs> 60 miles per hour, that's classed as storm force. And that's, uh, that's the sort of wind speed when you start getting trees uprooted. I can hardly move anything! Oh my god! Nice! This is unbelievable! 90 miles per hour, that's when buildings and bridges start to collapse. This is the map! At 100 miles per hour, you're looking at the average takeoff speed of a, a light aircraft. through there. Oh, we've really got some big speed here. Oh, the big turn, that G, that's a G like being a jack. There, there. Oh. If you put a bicycle on the roof of your car, it'll create so much drag that on a journey from London to Scotland, it would be cheaper to send it on the train. Drive with your window down and you're throwing money away. It'll up your annual fuel bill by 150 pounds. One of the world's leading experts in aerodynamics is David Ginola, although he doesn't know it, the long-haired goof. But whether he likes it or not, it's pure science that helps him beat the world's best goalkeepers. Qu'est-ce qu'il y a Oh, I was put off by his hair. The rules here are really very simple. You must have a slogan on your T-shirt and you must leave your dental floss at home. But so far as the cars are concerned, pretty much anything goes. The Bonneville Salt Flats is the place where you can come with your hand-built toys and spend the rest of your life turning money into noise. The organizers had said they'd get me a car, and I was very much looking forward to seeing which one of these rakish beasts it would be. Oh dear. Not exactly a Ferrari, is it? Looks like a piece of Lego. Look at that front end. That's gonna cleave the air like a chest of drawers, that is. Be better off running. Mind you, the people who built it are even less streamlined. Frank is too vast to get in the cockpit, so the driving these days is left to his son, Mikey. Today, we've developed all sorts of safety systems to keep us alive. But let's not forget, even the most powerful car in the world will only do 200 miles an hour, and that's perfectly safe. It won't kill you unless you crash.
sight. But sadly, I have no clue what's going on here. My physics master at school said I was the stupidest person he'd ever taught. So, rather than try to bluff my way through the problem, I've sought out a man who put a jet engine in a car. And broke the sound barrier with it. Richard Noble. Jeremy, this is very easy. The wonderful thing about the jet engine is, like all these things, it's incredibly simple. It consists of two fans. We've got one fan, which is the hot fan, on one end, and one fan, which is the cold fan, on the other end. Okay. No, I'm lost already. So humans don't just cope with danger, we're programmed to actually enjoy it. And today's speed is the new danger. This TVR is the new lion. You might think people buy sports cars because they're vain, and they probably are, but there's more to it than that. Sports cars are lower to the ground, so with the nose snorting the white lines off the road, it feels like you're going faster. They're louder too, and you get buffeted by the wind. Of course, your modern brain knows that's because you're in a car, but your million-year-old tree shrew brain is screaming danger, danger, and pumping out the chemicals. Actually, man was on the right track 500 years ago when the Chinese were messing around with their fireworks. Indeed, the story goes that a chap called Wan Lu figured that if he got some really big fireworks, and attach them to the back of a sort of chair thing. And then if he lit them, he might be able to fly. As ideas go, this one makes me want to run. Well, let me give you a few clues. The machine I'm talking about is more complex than an aeroplane, but unlike an aeroplane, it'll work in any weather, and it can be operated by an idiot after virtually no training at all. It has more computing power than any Apollo spacecraft and more mechanical power than our ancestors would have dreamed possible. And yet, despite all this, you can buy one for about 900 pounds. It's a tool. It's freedom. Some say it's even art. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you my machine of the century. The Vauxhall Vectra. Speaking to you as a motoring journalist, obviously, I hate everything about this car. I hate the engine, I hate the seats, I hate the carpets, I hate the roof, I hate the windscreen, I hate the tyres, I hate the bootlid, I hate the lights. If I thought about it long and hard enough, I'm sure I could even come up with a reason for hating the wipers. But here's the thing, which would you rather have, a Vectra or no car at all? And that really sums things up. You see, even when a car is bad, it's still good. So when it's good, it's absolutely brilliant. with, the car was a rich man's plaything. The people who turned up to race them had double-barreled names, and so did their machines. You had Fortescue Carruthers in his Hispano Suiza. But things have changed. This is motor racing today. And there goes Gaza in his Ezra. So it seems that where Lenin failed, the car succeeded. It brought power 
to the people. They say that the cornerstone of individual freedom and democracy is the vote. Really? You try driving to the coast in a ballot box. Think what the car has done for society. Without it, housing estates like this one could never have happened. We'd all be hutched up in city centres in 80-storey tower blocks. The car lets us breathe. It's cheap, too. In 1938, it took someone on an average wage 18 months to earn enough to buy an average car. Today, though, someone on an average wage could buy a Vectra like this in just seven months. And look how much more car he's getting. Space for five. Can you take it? Airbags, a CD player, heated seats, air conditioning, electric windows, and a top speed of 130 miles an hour. We got microwave food, right? Says on the packet, cook in 90 seconds. 90 seconds? I haven't got 90 seconds, that means pressing the 9 then the naught. What I always do is bang it in there and press 8-8, much quicker. GM, 15 seconds. What? Okay, 15 seconds. Oh no. 3, 2, 1, now. Oh, what's happening? No, no, no. Oh, oh. oh. However frightening you think this looks, take it from me, in the cockpit, it's a thousand times worse. Hello, is that World of Warplanes? Yeah, do you stock um, lightning jet fighters? Oh, you do! Could you, could you put one aside for me? Yeah, my name. J. R. Clarkson. Thanks very much. Right, that leaves me now with just two problems. The first is my wife, who thinks that having a jet fighter in the garden is the most stupid idea ever. And the second is getting it here. Fantastic! One of these things made me cry when I was four years old at an air show. I make my wife cry now, that's for sure. That's a daffodil gone. Oh my god. Cold war plane. Cold day. I thought the biggest problem would come when we tried to crane it over the gates. But I was wrong. The biggest problem came as we towed it up the lawn. Oh dear. Oh dear, again. This is going to be harder to explain than I thought. Right, I've got it here. Now for the tricky bit. Hello, dear. They had to tow it up the drive. And um, it made a bit of a groove. 
And you complain about the moles? Come and have a look. Don't trip over the um, trench, though. Darling, that's a bloody awful mess. What? Look at that. It's fine, it's put a bit of topsoil in, some seed, you won't even know it's there by the, by the spring. Look at this. If it weren't for one of these, you'd be speaking Russian. Come and stand in the dry, dear. It's, it's kind of like Does a summer house. Does this show up on, ray, on, on satellites? Yeah. So we could become a bombing target? No. Good night. <laughs>